We're asked to calculate the degree of unsaturation and then draw all the structures that we can possibly think of for this formula they give us, C3H4. Now this is simple enough to probably just start doodling away, but um, let me show you how to calculate the degree of unsaturation using this uh, formula. Um, it's equal to 2 times the number of carbons plus 2 plus the number of nitrogens, subtract halogens, subtract hydrogens, um, divided by 2. So what we do is we plug in 3 in place of C, and we plug in 4 in place of hydrogen, or H, and calculate this all out, and we get a value of 2. Again, what this value means is that uh, we could have uh, two rings, we could have uh, two pi bonds, or we could have one ring and one pi bond. Okay? So the sum of the pi bonds plus the rings must equal to 2. Now we only have three carbons here, so it's you know impossible for us to have two rings. Um, but we might have two pi bonds, we might have a pi bond and a ring. So let's go ahead and split the table, um, this page, into two pieces. And think about first uh, two pi bonds. Okay. Um, we have uh, three carbons here. Let's just draw them out. Um, they must be in a, in a line here, and we could have two pi bonds. Um, we could have a pi bond uh, here, and we could have a pi bond here. We also could have um, a triple bond. Okay, so if you have a carbon-carbon triple bond, that counts as two pi bonds. So we could have allene or propene as two possibilities here. Okay. Over here, let's go ahead and think about one pi bond and one ring. Now we just have three carbons, so um, there's not a whole lot of options here. And where we put the double bond is kind of arbitrary. Um, I'll just put it here. So that, that's one possibility for creating a molecule that satisfies C3H4, and it contains one pi bond and one ring. Okay? Thanks for watching.